Fujifilm just released a brand new camera tethering app, and I've got some information I think you're gonna wanna know. Hi everyone, welcome to Pal the Tech. Last week, Fujifilm launched a brand new tethering app for Windows and Mac computers. Using just the new app, you can connect your X or GFX camera to your computer for tethered shooting. The app will connect both wirelessly and with a wired USB connection as well. Before I go any further, I must tell you that as of the date of today's video, there is no user manual or instruction guide for the app. So as you can see right here on Fujifilm's software page, you've got the new Tether app right here. Down below is the Fujifilm X app, and that of course is the app for your smartphone. You'll see right here that there's also something called the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic Tether plugin. And this particular plugin has been around for quite a while and it allows you to tether your Fujifilm camera to your computer, in particular with Lightroom. You do not need to rush out and spend almost $80 to buy this plugin in order to use the new Fujifilm tethering app. So the most important point that you need to know is that the new Fujifilm tethering app is still sort of tied in to that older Adobe Tether Shooting Pro plugin. And the way it's connected can be a bit confusing, but don't worry, your uncle pal the tech is here today to get all of this sorted out for you. So right here on the app's download page, you see a chart that shows the compatible operating systems and camera models. But look at these little numbers right here in this column that link to side notes. Unless you own a GFX model, which supports every feature, what you can actually do with the app entirely depends on whether or not you already have that older Tether Shooting Plugin Pro installed. If you don't have that older plugin, don't rush out and purchase it. And that's because you don't, you know what? Hold that thought, we'll get back to it in a minute. Once you install and you open the app for the very first time, you will see this message right here if you already have that older tethering plugin pro installed on your computer. And you'll see this message if you don't. Now there's definitely a difference in the options between whether or not you have that plugin installed when you first put the Fujifilm tethering app on here, but you really don't see that until you connect a camera. So what you're gonna need to do are two things. First, you need to prepare the app for tethering, and then two, you need to prepare your camera for tethering. So what you wanna do first is go into preferences. And right here, you wanna make sure that the USB box is checked. If you plan on connecting wirelessly, then make sure that you also check the network box as well. For file type, make sure that JPEG and RAW are checked. Now for this screen right here, it's very important, especially if you plan on connecting this to Lightroom. What you wanna do in this box right here is tell the app where to put the photos once they come from the camera into the computer. Notice that right here, you can link various software applications with this app. You don't necessarily need to only use Lightroom or Capture One. However, I ran into a problem with Lightroom when I specified Lightroom as the linked app. It kept opening up new copies of Lightroom and it was very frustrating, wasted a lot of time. So what I'm gonna do is show you the way I worked around it, which actually I think is a lot better, but just know that this is the area to specify the linked program, meaning that when you're using the tethering app, once you take the photo, it will send that photo into that other program. But if you haven't done much tethering before, or if you are using Lightroom Classic, I recommend not putting anything in these three boxes. However, make sure that you have a folder specified here where it can send the photos. We will get back to using Lightroom with this app in just a bit. The next three options are just your histogram, screen background, and some shortcuts that you can add. There is something I wanna show you right here. You see this little icon? If you click on it, it will move the entire app to a different monitor. Let's get to the camera. I'm gonna show you first how to use a wired connection, and then I'll show you wireless. Go into your camera's menu and down to the connection area right here into connection mode and change this to USB tether shooting auto. I also recommend setting your camera so that it doesn't automatically shut itself off and disconnect your tethering. And for that, go into the wrench, power management, auto power off, and turn it to off. So at this point, you're now ready to connect your camera to your computer with a USB cable. Be patient with this because depending upon the kind of USB cable that you have, it could take for up to 30, maybe even 60 seconds to connect. 
Most of the time I saw it connect between maybe five and 10 seconds. Once you're connected, this is what you see. Now I'm gonna tell you what I think is the most important and often confusing thing about this entire app. You will notice that up here you only see preview and the screen is blank, even though the camera is currently connected and the screen active. In other words, there's no live view button. And that's because when you have an X-T5, for example, connected to it, you will only see a live view button if your computer already has that older Fujifilm tether shooting plugin pro app installed. Now there's a little bit of a workaround for this. It's not great, but it's something. If you go into AFMF settings and you tick the box that says focus area, now you can see a live view. The problem is by doing that, none of the other options are enabled. In fact, the only thing that you can do is change the size of your focus area, as well as click right on the screen itself to move your focus point around. That's it. As soon as you untick the box, the preview goes away, you see that? But now all of the other settings are enabled. However, when you have all of the options, including the Live View tab, you're also going to see a number of other options. For example, Automated Shooting appears, where you can control exposure and focus bracketing, as well as interval timer shooting. Now, since I just connected this camera to the app, there's nothing in the preview window. You see that here? That's because I have not taken a photo yet. Remember that we have this folder right here, which is the location that we told the app is going to be for our incoming photos. This is the folder. This is the app. That was pretty fast. And as you can see, we've got the JPEG and the RAW. And as you take your photos, they come right into the incoming photos folder. Once you've taken the shot and it's put in your folder, that's it. There's nothing that you can do like change the film simulation and so forth that's gonna make any difference whatsoever to the final photo. By the way, this is kind of confusing, but SD card one, 888 shots left, and I don't have an SD card in slot two. You can actually format your SD cards, not something I actually feel comfortable with because if you accidentally click on it, you get this tiny little window that it would be real easy to hit the return or enter key on your computer and bam, you've just formatted your entire SD card. Now there's a lot of options here and I'm not gonna go through each one. I have a whole video on Fujifilm tethering that I've talked about a lot of this stuff before. So if you wanna take a deeper dive, be sure to watch that video. But just to highlight a few points, these two camera icons right here allow you to back up and then restore your camera settings. Performing a number of common tasks are very fast. For example, changing the film simulation. And of course, when you're adjusting the camera itself, for example, if you put your focus mode, say, into manual, it'll instantly change on the app. You see it right here? Which will also affect a number of the other settings, just like it does in the camera menu. Right down in this area right here are the actual controls displayed of the camera. And you can actually click on this button right here to take the shot if you want to. While you can use these controls up here to kind of zoom in and around, I think you'll find it much easier to zoom in and move around on the navigator pane right here. There are so many options and features with this app. It's pretty impressive. Whether you're changing the metering mode or adjusting the image stabilization, sports mode or pixel shift multi-shot, all of the image quality and JPEG settings are available. And if your installation supports live shooting mode, there's an entire tab for adding overlays, guidelines, and exposure warnings. So we have been connected to this computer the entire time. Now let's do it wirelessly. On the same computer that you have the tethering app, you need to make sure the camera and the computer must both be on the same Wi-Fi network. And as a reminder, in the tethering app, make sure that you have network selected. So the first thing you'll want to do is go right into your wireless settings, which is located in the network USB section of your camera. If you have any problems with this, a solution that I have found works very well is to simply reset your wireless setting on the camera. That'll clear out any problems in a lot of cases. Once you're done, go back into your network settings and it gives you a choice of up to five options. We're gonna choose the first one. Now the most common setup is gonna probably be access point setting. Go ahead and choose that and then choose manual setup. That's generally what most people will use for the most common Wi-Fi networks. And this will show you a list of all the current Wi-Fi networks around you. If possible, choose the five gigahertz Wi-Fi network to connect to because that will be a lot faster for you. And here you'll need to put in your Wi-Fi password. One very important thing to remember about this, if you have any lowercase letters in your password, you need to first select this icon right here. And that'll toggle between uppercase, lowercase, and various symbols and characters. 
So go ahead and put in your password. Once you're done, select the set button. It'll now try to connect using the password that you put in here. Once connected, you'll see this message. Make sure you press the menu OK button. But that's not all. You also must go down right here and select finish. If you don't do that, it is not gonna save that connection, okay? So make sure you do. Now that we've told the camera the correct Wi-Fi network to connect to, you can press the DISP back button and go back into the menu. And now you're ready to connect the camera to your Wi-Fi network. It's not connected yet. All you've done so far is tell the camera what Wi-Fi network to connect to, but you also need to tell it to connect. Go down to connection mode and select wireless tether shooting fixed. As soon as you do that, you will see the back of the camera start to flash red. Once it connects, it'll turn green. You'll also know you're connected by this icon on your screen right here. And you'll see it listed right here. And instead of USB after the camera name, it'll now say network. And all of the same settings and things you can do in the app are available for wireless now as they were for wired. We are gonna be choosing the largest file size we can, shooting both JPEG and RAW, but we will do lossless compressed. Remember that we've told the app to put the incoming photos in the incoming photos folder right here. So here goes, and keep your eye on that incoming photo folder. I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Still waiting. Up, oh, now they're coming in. We got one. Remember it's JPEG and RAW. So the last thing I wanna go over is using this new Tether app with Adobe Lightroom Classic. So I'm now gonna show you a simple way to do it that does not require that older tethering plugin pro installed on your computer. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is follow the directions I mentioned earlier in connecting your camera to the app. If you're using a USB cord, choose this one. Wireless, choose this. So first, you're gonna to wanna to open the Fujifilm Tether app and connect your camera to the computer, either wirelessly or using the USB cable. And once again, be patient because it sometimes can take a little bit of time to sense that the camera's there. One thing I noticed that can sort of speed it up, lightly half press the shutter button. I noticed that when I did that, it seemed to appear quickly. Now, when you open up Lightroom and you go into the settings and you go into File, Plugin Manager, you'll see a list of the various plugins that you have. And when you install the new Fujifilm Tether app, you'll see the new Fujifilm Tether app plugin. Now, if you have previously purchased and installed that older Fujifilm Tether plugin pro, what's gonna happen is the app is gonna automatically disable that. However, it'll still give you all those extra features, such as live view, right here and these settings and so forth. You wanna go into your Tether app settings and obviously make sure that you have the appropriate checkbox ticked, but most importantly, under destination folder, make sure that you've specified the folder where the images are gonna come from the camera into the computer. And you can also have that folder reside on a connected SSD, external drive, or a network RAID setup. I leave these blank, click okay to save them. At this point, you're all set up with the Fujifilm tethering app. Now now let's switch to Lightroom. And by the way, you should wait to open up Lightroom until you've configured the Fujifilm tethering app. Set up the Fujifilm tether app first while Lightroom is closed. Once the tethering app is set up, then go ahead and open up your catalog in Lightroom. And you're gonna wanna go to File, Auto Import, and select Auto Import Settings. And here you're gonna pick a watched folder. This is gonna be that same folder that you told the Fujifilm tethering app and it's incoming photos right here. Next, you need to specify the destination. This is the default. We don't want that. So I'm gonna create another folder that will be the final, final destination once it's brought into Lightroom. Now, this can be where you normally keep all of your photos. So for this folder, I'm gonna put it on this connected external drive. Click on new folder. And there you go. So what's gonna happen is Lightroom is gonna always be watching the folder that the tethering app is placing the photos into. And once it brings them into Lightroom, it will then develop those photos, right? When it adds the settings and things like that, they will then be moved over to this location here. Obviously you can customize this any way that suits your workflow. And there is one last final, very important setting you need to make before you close out this dialog box. 
put a check in this box that says enable auto import. Click OK and you're done. And in the future, you can go to auto import and then disable it without changing those other settings that you made. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did you see how fast they came in? They're now part of your normal photo catalog in Lightroom. And they've been moved to the location that we specified right here. One of the most important takeaways you can have for this video is that if you are gonna be using a wired connection, the USB-C cords matter. I decided to connect this camera to the other right. computer in Studio B. <laughs> and interestingly enough, I set the drive mode dial to continuous high. Now, when the dial is on S, if you look at this drop down menu here, you don't see a choice for continuous high. Yet, when you rotate the dial on the camera, it changes in the app. But what I wanted to do was shoot at a high burst rate to see how fast I could get the JPEG and RAW files from the camera into the computer. We're doing this in real time here here we go. the USB-C cords matter. So overall, what are my thoughts on this new tethering app? It's not bad, but I think it suffers from a few problems. First, there were no instructions or manual released yet for the app. So the app was put out there, right? People were downloading it and that's when all the questions came up. Now, the other issue has to do with that original plugin, the one that was $79 that you got from the Adobe site, the Tether Pro. Having the app perform different functions and different features, depending upon whether or not you have that piece of software installed, it is kind of confusing. And really it's not addressed anywhere. You just see it right here kind of in a foot note. And so if you had to do it that way because of technical reasons, that should be communicated front and center so that it's understandable why it has to be that way. Obviously, the limitations of some of these cameras, they can't do all of those functions like the X-T1. I love the fact that it has a lot of camera settings. I mean, you can edit and change almost anything. I would like an ability to disable the format SD card as an option for those of us that are very nervous about that. But I love of all of the features that are available. I love the overlays and the guidelines and the way you can move it to another monitor. And the app is very speedy and fast. That's another plus. I also love the fact that Fuji included various messages. They're helpful when the app is first started. There is a lot more features I can demo. There's things I have questions on and I don't know the answers to, so I didn't want to include them in the video. However, I am sure there will be a manual, there will be instructions of some kind. And if I end up getting a question on a feature that I couldn't cover today, I will end up making a future Fast Friday video or something just going over that. I do recommend that you download the app and try it out. I mean, it's the price is right, it's free. A lot of that connection speed is dependent upon the cord if you're using wired connection. If you're using wireless, try it on five gigahertz if you can. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you found today's video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I'm going to be signing off now, but I'll see you in a new video very soon. Take care. Oh my God. Did I not? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I wasn't recording. Oh my God. I thought I wasn't recording. Okay. The record light is on. <sighs> if I had to shoot that video again, I would jump out the non-existent window in here.